Now for a deeper analysis of the mission, we are being joined by Dr. Malcolm Davis, who is a senior analyst in defence strategy and capability at Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's my pleasure. Now, sir, just to begin with, uh, what can you tell us of the current phase of the Chandrayaan? How critical would you say this is? Look, it's a really important mission. Uh, obviously, we saw earlier in the week uh, the Russian probe Luna 25 crashed into the moon. So now all eyes are on Chandrayaan 3 uh, for a successful landing tonight at about 10:35 uh, p.m. Canberra time. Uh, and I think that uh, once that landing happens, uh, that will be a huge accomplishment for India in particular, because for the first time we will have landed a spacecraft. Uh, on the south pole of the moon and your previous report I think identified some of the important aspects of, of landing there and in particular the role of, of water ice in the lunar regolith. Uh, right so that being said could you tell us about the tracking support that's being provided for this mission how is ISRO in touch with multiple stations across the world as well? Well certainly uh, you know India is is monitoring the spacecraft I believe uh, the Canberra um, Deep Space Network, just out of Tidman Villa, just out of Canberra, is, is also monitoring it. Uh, various different other ground stations around Earth are, are monitoring it. And obviously, the Indian Space Research Organization uh, is, is very much connected into uh, what's happening with the probe. It's also linked into the orbiter for Chandrayaan 2, uh, so that's acting as a relay. So You've got a fairly sophisticated uh, deep space tracking, telemetry and controlled network put in place to make sure that this probe gets down safely. Right. And also, sir, what makes the South Pole and areas near the South Pole so attractive for exploration? And what's your assessment? How do you think this can help in further space, uh, space exploration as well? Well, as your reporter said, it's all about the water ice. If there is water ice uh, locked up in the lunar regolith, the lunar soil, and that water ice can be extracted. It can be converted into, firstly, oxygen for uh, sustaining a human presence on the moon in moon bases. That then enables uh, the utilization of lunar resources to undertake a space-based economy, to do space manufacturing, to build space-based solar power satellites that can then beam solar energy back to Earth in a limitless uh, supply. But also that water ice can be converted into rocket fuel. And the moon has a very shallow gravity well. Uh, so if you can launch a uh, spacecraft from the moon, uh, that can exploit that deep, that, that more shallower gravity well to gain added advantage in terms of the cost of getting around the solar system. So really, we need to think about the moon as very much the stepping stone to the rest of the solar system. It opens up the solar system far more effectively and easily than uh, trying to do everything from Earth. Right. Well, sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights on this. Thank you.